It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hello everybody, this is Tyler Preston 20. So today I'm gonna play a game that I found to be interesting that I just found on this sort of website called El Pais. So this game is that I'm gonna try to guess the Spanish accents from the various countries in this game. Now as you guys probably know, I've been studying like Spanish for a really long time. I'm quite familiar with different accents at this point because I constantly talk to people from Spain I also talk to people from like, you know, Panama because my girlfriend is from Panama all the time. I heard of like, you know, the various Mexican accents and like the telenovelas. I've heard like the El Salvadorian accents too. And so I'm pretty familiar with the different types of accents in the various parts of the Spanish speaking world. And so for this whole entire video, I will be guessing like the various accents and hopefully throughout this whole entire game, I would actually score a really good score because I know for a fact that I'm used to different accents and I want to show you guys how good I am. So let's uh, start this uh, game right here. All right, let's see the video up here and then of course I'll get my answer in the bottom section down below. In my país, we use the word orale que significa, puede ser desde una afirmación hasta una manera de, de impulsar a la gente que haga. Ok, immediately I know for a fact that this accent comes from Mexico. The main reason why I say that is because words like orale is actually exclusive to the Mexican accent. So I'm going to say Mexico is like the accent for this one. And let's go to the next one. Now this one, I'm not sure which one it is because I haven't heard the audio yet. So let's listen to this one. En mi país se dice mucho majo. Eh, majo es cuando una persona es simpática, agradable. Por ejemplo, qué majo es ese tío o la persona que me presentaste ayer era muy maja. Okay, that's like the first time I heard this expression. Qué majo. Qué majo. Okay, it's definitely like you know, it's not Mexico. That's for sure. Uh, I don't think it's Spain either. Is it Spain? It must be like, you know, uh, I would probably say like, you know, uh, hmm, maybe it is Spain. I'm going to say Spain, Spain. Now this one I'm sure is like, let's see, Uruguay, Argentina. She looks kind of like a person from the, Rep like the Dominican Republic right here, but uh, let's take a listen. En mi país se utiliza mucho la palabra vaina, que significa cosa. Okay, yeah, that's definitely like the Dominican Republic right here. Dominican Republic, because vaina is like used in that kind of country. En mi país utilizamos la palabra quilombo para referirnos a cuando hay un desorden, un caos, una situación de caos. Por ejemplo, se podría utilizar cuando uno entra a su habitación y... Y básicamente está muy desordenada de si su esto es un quilombo. Quilombo. I never heard of it. Like a, this is brand new to me. Okay. So it's not Mexico. It's definitely not Argentina. So I'm going to pick like Nicaragua for this one. Because I don't think it's from Spain either. So I'm going to pick. Oh. Oh. I was wrong. It's actually from Argentina. Oh my God. What? So that's like the first thing I got wrong. Okay. All right, let's hear this X. Let's see. It's El Salvador, Puerto Rico, Uruguay, and Peru. So let's see the, the accents right here. En mi país utilizamos muchísimo el modismo ta como indicativo de, de acuerdo. Está bien. Okay. Eh, también lo usamos como muletilla en frases donde no tiene ningún significado específico. Por ejemplo. Eh, ayer iba a ir al mercado, pero tal, al final no fui. 
I honestly never heard about this, like, you know, cutting off it to make it sound like a cuff or like, okay, but, um, uh, uh, you know, I don't think it's, you know, from Puerto Rico or like, um, Uruguay. I would probably think it might be like from Peru. Could it be from Peru? Because I'm not that familiar with like the accent from Uruguay or Peru. I probably heard, you know, like, you know, Puerto Rico accents before, but it's not as clear. So I'm going to probably say Peru. Oh, it's Uruguay. It's like the second thing I got wrong. Uh, all right, let's hear the accent right here. In my country, se usa mucho la palabra ahuevao. Se usa para describir a alguien que es lento o tiene baja agilidad mental. Una persona puede ser o puede estar ahuevao. I think I hear my girlfriend use this word all the time. Is it from Panama? Yeah, is that actually, yeah, yeah. If my girlfriend is watching this video, yes, I'm actually right. <laughs> I heard, I keep on hearing her using that word all the time. Yes. Okay. En mi país se utiliza mucho la palabra hace que es un término coloquial para referirse a un amigo, a un conocido. Por ejemplo, se encuentran dos amigos y se dicen, ¿qué volá hacer? Wow. Okay. I don't think it's from Cuba. I think it might be from Chile. Is it from Chile? Oh, it's from Cuba. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm so bad at these accents. I mean, it's like the third time I got wrong. In my country, we say a word that is cambur. Like, for example, I'm going to eat this cambur, or this cambur is maduro, or this cambur is already passed. I'm going to guess Venezuela. Is it Venezuela for this accent? Please tell me it's Venezuela. Okay, it is Venezuela. It is Venezuela. Okay. En mi país se usa mucho la palabra amarre. Cuando estás saliendo con un chico o con una chica, eh, no se suele decir eh, tengo novio, sino estoy amarrado. Por ejemplo, yo estoy amarrada con Eduardo desde hace seis meses. Okay, I think uh, I would probably say okay, it's definitely not Dominican. No, it's not. It's not Dominican Republic. Uh, I would say it might be from Ecuador. Is it from Ecuador? Okay, it is from Ecuador. En mi país se dice la palabra apachar, que significa apretar. Por ejemplo, apacho el botón del control de televisión, apacho el botón para subir el elevador, o apacho el mouse para hacer clic en algo en el ordenador. Okay, I am not sure. That is really hard. That is real. Like all these words are like you know, it's close to different countries that so I haven't really studied. Like usually, my focus, my time, my energy is not for like you know these sort of different accents with the certain words. Usually, I just try to use like general Latin American words. But um, hmm, I would probably say is it is it Costa Rica? Oh, it's Guatemala. It's Guatemala. Okay. En mi país usamos la palabra berraco para referirnos a una persona con mucho carácter, que tiene cualidades de líder, que siempre va adelante, pero también tiene una connotación negativa. Entonces, por ejemplo, cuando uno va en un tram. That guy is like, you know, really, really hard to understand. Super, super strong accent. Um, because he has a super strong accent, and he also has like a New York shirt right here. I'm going to guess he's Puerto Rican. I'm gonna guess so because Colombia is known for having the cleanest accent. And I don't think it sounds as strong in these other two countries for like Uruguay and Paraguay. So I'm gonna pick Puerto Rico. Oh, it's Colombia. It's Colombia. What? Eh, mi país utiliza mucho la palabra huevada, que quiere decir como tontería o tontera. Puede usarse cuando uno está enojado o decepcionado al decir. 
qué huevada, o para referirse a algo como acabo de ver esa huevada de película. I'm, that is like a really hard one. Okay. It sounds like something that might be like in Central America. I'm gonna, is it Honduras or is it Bolivia? I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably say Honduras. Oh, it's Bolivia. Oh my God. So close by mouth, man. Cuando en mi país decimos pura vida, Okay, that is like, you know, uh, from Costa Rica. Okay. En mi país ocupamos una palabra muy característica para denominar a los novios. Les decimos pololo. Pololo, polola, pololeo, pololear, en todas sus formas. I never heard about that. It's like the first time I heard this. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, is she from Chile? Uh, she is from Chile. Okay. Mi país se usa la palabra cubical para señalar que algo se quebró o se hizo añicos. Por ejemplo, mi perro cubicó el control del televisor. Mm, I would probably say. Uh, That is hard. I don't think it's Peru. I don't think it's Peru at all. I'm gonna say uh, Puerto Rico. Oh, it's Paraguay. Psst. Oh my God. It's probably like Argentina for this one, just by the looks, but uh, let's listen. En mi país utilizamos la palabra chamba para referirnos al trabajo. Por ejemplo, nos vemos después de la chamba, o estoy buscando chamba. Es tan común que incluso a veces lo usamos como verbo. Así es frecuente escuchar frases tipo tengo que ir a chambear o estuve chambeando esta tarde. Ok, I'm going to probably say Argentina. Oh, it's Peru. Chamba. Ok, I never heard about that one. Chamba. Ok, so this one I... En mi país usamos mucho la palabra chunche como sinónimo de cosa. También se usa cuando no nos acordamos del nombre de algo. Por ejemplo, chancha. I think it might be like, uh, is it Mexico? Oh, it's Nicaragua. Oh my God. I'm terrible at this. How many more do I have left on this? Let me check. It's like I have two more. I have like two more and then I'm done with this whole entire thing. But I've been doing terrible lately. Doing terrible. I need to, you know, retrain my ears for these different accents. Because clearly I heard a lot of different accents before, but not the phrases that they're using or whatever. But um En mi país ocupamos la palabra chivo para decir que algo está bonito o que nos gusta. Entonces, si yo les digo que chivos tus zapatos, eso quiere decir que bonitos tus zapatos, me gustan. Wow. I never heard about that. It's like all these countries have their own different slang, man. That is like hard. Uh, I want to say, I'm not sure which country. Is it Colombia? It's El Salvador. Oh, God. En mi país utilizamos la palabra cheque para decir que todo está bien o cuando hemos concluido algo. Todo está cheque. Oh, my God. I want to say Venezuela. Is it Venezuela? It's Honduras. Like, every single time I do this, it's like I'm almost close. Really, really close. En mi país se utiliza mucho la palabra bregar. Cuando alguien te pregunta cómo estás, puedes decir en la brega, lo que quiere decir en la lucha. También se dice no puedo bregar cuando algo o alguien te molesta y no soportas. Ok, I think it's going to be like uh, Chile. Oh, it's Puerto Rico. All right, let's see the results right here. For Mexico, I was right. For Spain, I was right. For the Dominican Republic, I was right. Argentina, eh. Uruguay, eh. Panama, correct. Cuba, eh. 
Venezuela, of course, I was right. Ecuador, I was right. I was wrong for Guatemala, Colombia, Bolivia. I was right for Costa Rica. I was right for Chile. And the rest of them, I was just all wrong. So that means I need to probably study more of these, you know, the sounds of these accents and, of course, the various exclusive words that come with these sort of accents. But, uh, yeah, this has actually been really interesting to, you know, try to see, like, what kind of accent is what. So, uh, yeah, that was really fun. Now, typically, again, I'm just, you know, when I speak Spanish, like, I typically just use a general kind of neutral accent, quote, unquote, because there's, like, no such thing as a neutral accent because there are different words depending on the country or whatnot. However, at the same time, I try to use words that pretty much the entire Spanish-speaking world actually can understand. And so I'm still kind of getting used to these various accents. Again, I said before earlier in the video that I listened to like these various accents before. So it's pretty cool to hear these sort of words that I have no idea what they mean until right now. But uh, what do you guys think? Did I did bad? Did I did good? Uh, please tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.